Well, you might know at RCTNT, I'm right into RC construction vehicles. Big and small, hydraulic, electronic. If it digs or if it tips, I'm all about it. And I happened to stumble across something very recently that got me so excited, I have connected to the other side of the world to talk with my new friend, Jonathan Abbott of the Nano TRX project. Hi, Jonathan. Good to see you. Let's talk Good excavators. Let's do it. So the um, what I really wanted to know was uh, I just found your YouTube your YouTube channel, Jonathan, and it's uh, you've only got a couple of videos there. But as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, this guy, he's he's one of us, one of us. You've got a CNC machine there, an injection molding machine as well. Oh yeah. Presumably a few other toys off camera as well. Um, how did you get like how long have you been doing this? Well, I would love to nerd out with you for a couple of minutes on this. Yeah, I mean, I guess. It would probably be best to just kind of give you the backstory on the whole, like why this is a thing. Um, that would be amazing. So back in December of 2022, um, I found myself like I was, I was in between two jobs and um, I just wound up on a, you know, I, I have been into RC stuff pretty much my entire life, but I found myself on a different side of YouTube um, where these guys... Uh, they were actually in Germany speaking German and they were building these little tiny, um, you might have seen some of their videos, like the, I mean, they go crazy for the stuff. I know of the scene. It's, a, it's yep. an active scene in Germany. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So mm. like a tiny little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like HO yeah. scale. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I found them and I started watching videos after video and like, I don't know, I just, I wanted one. So I went to go, um, at the time I was transitioning into a pretty high stress desk job. So I thought it'd be perfect instead of like a little um, Zen garden to have this thing, like just something to de-stress with at my desk. Um, I <laughs> so I went to go try to buy one and they just, they didn't exist. Um, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if you've tried to find one that's smaller than like uh, one that's at least fully functional, like they just don't make them very small. Um, hmm. So I, uh, <laughs> I bought a resin printer. Um, I, I learned how to 3D design, um, and just for this, just for this project, just for this project. Yeah, I, I'm a real estate agent. I, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yep. I can't um, tell you how exciting that is to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you, I started from this scratch. This is the best time to come in too. There's so much cool stuff right. now that just wasn't around not very long ago. Right. So, what yeah. was your journey then? How, how did you even get started? Because that's there's a lot to jump from a resin <laughs> printer to what I saw in that video, right? Yeah. And it's only been a year and a half, two years. Yeah, two years. Tell. So, um, about for two months or so, I, I just worked nonstop learning how to three D design because I was in between jobs. I had tons of time. So, I, I finally, after those two months, I spit out something that kind of resembles what we have now. It's actually smaller. Um, I brought it just so you can see it. It's kind of in shambles now, but it, she's teeny tiny. This is, yeah, this is the resin printed one. Um, oh, that's so cool. I mean, it's, it's, it never finished, but it was close. Sure. To it. Um, sure, sure. So I, I got it pretty much figured out, um, especially the way the linear actuators would work, work and everything just to get it down in that size was the challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I started showing it off to various RC communities um, and people wanted one. Um, so at that time I was like, well, maybe I can make it like a little side hobby or something and just sell them as kits, uh, like a little resin printed kit. Somebody gets it and puts it together. Mm. Um, mm. But I don't know if you have any experience with resin printing. But it's weak. <laughs> yeah, it's brittle. <laughs> it's for looking um, at. It's not, for, it's not really for playing right. with unless it's like a static thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean... It, you drop one piece of this thing, it's going to break. And I just didn't feel comfortable selling a single one knowing that. Um, so it really, after that, I started my new job and it kind of went on the back burner for um, a while, about until eight months ago this year um, in January, February-ish, where I was like, you know what? I, I, I had posted it a few other places since then and people still wanted one. They were, they were going crazy for it. And I, I just dove head first in. Like I, I just went for it. Um, you work so quickly. Like I really admire <laughs> that. It's, um, like talk about jumping in at the deep end. So um, I'll interrupt, just ask a couple of quick questions. What sure. did you start designing with? What software were you using? Um, I started on Fusion 360, just the free right, cool. version. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, it's a good platform to learn on. 
I'm glad I did now that I'm looking back mm. um, with, I mean, I don't imagine many people to take the journey that I did, but if you are, um, because of the C and C, I'm glad I started on Fusion 360. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and and so that's a big jump to jump into C and C. How did you find the transition from 3D printing or um, additive to what's the word? Subtractive. How did you find the switch to just that kind of thing? Um, to be honest, I, it it wasn't a smooth transition. Um, <laughs> learning C and C was yeah, it was a lot. Um, because it puts you in a whole different headspace of the possibilities of what you can do and what you can't do. Um, mm. Along the way, mm. I found someone early on just on a, you know, a little job forum that uh, was doing some freelance work for injection molding and CNC. So at the very beginning, I, I was on YouTube kind of learning through videos on how to do stuff. And <laughs> I was That's using right. him to kind of check what I was doing to make sure I wasn't going to destroy something very quickly. <laughs> That's cool. You found a mentor in an unlikely yep. place, really. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yep. Nice. Um, Cause just see, seeing you have that, like you just showed, I really admired that little video. I tend to gush <laughs> when I get excited, but to have those two, those two pieces, put it together and just watch this thing and then pull out the piece. It's beautiful. It's beautiful it's, and it's, satisfying, it, right? Yep. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. So yeah, the, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if you know, have you done any CNC machining? One day. Yeah, I want to get a lathe. I want to do yep. what some of those. <laughs> um, and because see, injection molding is no longer some big factory thing. It's something you can actually do at home. Yes. Um, just like people are doing silicon molds as well and whatever else. It's mm -hmm. this whole maker thing. It's like a revolution for us. Very, very entitled Western, Western world <laughs> where um, we have access to an awful lot of stuff now. It's pretty crazy. Right. Yeah. It's mind blowing. Um, I was mm. I was kind of blown away mm. getting into it. Like. Really? Like, like you can do that in my garage? <laughs> yeah, um, the problem with CNC machining from someone who doesn't know what they're doing is that it can be very destructive very quickly. Um, right. I mean, you the CNC does exactly what you tell it to do, which is great, and it's not so great. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Because it's a new block every time, right? <laughs> right. So I, I learned yeah. some things pretty quickly. I think my first day, um, I told it, you have to tell it where it is because it doesn't know where it is. You have to kind of program it into it. And it thought it was um, one inch higher than it actually was. <laughs> right. So when I hit go, I'm just sitting here watching this thing and the bit comes straight down and goes, luckily I was doing wood at the beginning. I didn't start on metal. Okay. Cool. The thing went straight through the wood and just, it crashed big time. Yeah, it was, it was scary. <laughs> oh, that's awful. That's awful. Yep. Um, that's funny though. But yeah, so I, I, I learned a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, okay. So we're talking about making stuff. The other thing I saw in your video was what appeared to be a prototype radio transmitter. You, it doesn't look like you've gone off the shelf here because I recognize some of, I've dabbled with Arduino and other stuff because now it's all kind of modular, right? What are right. you using? Are you happy to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've yeah. got a little, the, I've got the pre-production thing here and I've also got, so uh, yeah, the kind of um, prototype one. Um, so this is the board for the um, transmitter. I don't know if that's going to focus in. Yeah, uh, it's that's good enough. Yeah, it's it's simple. Um, it's got a ESP32 on it, which is just like a little okay. Arduino board. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's pretty much it. On, on this side, it's very simple. Um, on the excavator side, <laughs> that's where it was complex. I was using, like for that original resin printed model, uh, I was soldering everything with little DAS Micro. Have you seen those tiny? Um, yeah, they're tiny components. Uh, <laughs> this this here is a clean lab. Um, I've done okay. data recovery work, soldering under a microscope for some years, <laughs> on and off. Yep. And it's if you haven't done it before, it's uh, you're going to learn some stuff. Put it that way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first version, I was I was soldering onto these tiny little boards, and not only was it like even if I sold the kits, it's really prohibitive to most people. Most people aren't going to want yeah. to or be able to do that. Um, mm. It was also really cost prohibitive. I think just in the electronics for that first version, I'm at way over a hundred dollars just to get it working. Um, mm. So 
I, I we went back and I don't know anything about PCB design. I outsourced that one from the beginning. I didn't okay. try. Cool. Um, cool, cool. So I, I found a guy. Uh, he actually it was two guys, and they designed a PCB that would fit in it. It was it's one PCB. It just pops in, um, and then it plugs in with uh, these little tiny JST connectors for all the motors. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's straight up so 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 exciting and impressive at the same time. Because yep. you got the world at your fingertips, eh? Yes. <laughs> yep. So that's great. That's great. That was the little. I mean, you've probably seen this one in videos and such, but this is the. I think um, that's what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Th I mean, that's it's very simple now, um, and that's all I'm trying to do is just simplicity is key, especially if I want to sell these things and I'm assembling them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, mm. So it's just two joysticks. Um, it's a six-channel uh, excavator, but there's only four channels here. The way mm -hmm. I got around that without having to put extra buttons and toggle switches or something is just there's a click mechanism you know on the joysticks yeah, cool. so to switch to tracks you'll just hit the button now you have forward and back tracks makes sense makes sense um yeah. that's that's a very intelligent approach actually yeah before it was a toggle yeah. switch and i was like this is kind of unnecessary if we're already going to be putting buttons on the thing so yeah yeah true plus kids cost down simpler yeah i like it yep. that's good and what well, is just a hardware interrupt you don't even need to know about this stuff because it's you can outsource parts of it. That's yep. smart. That's smart, yes. Jonathan. I like it. <laughs> uh, what else did I want to know? Uh, oh, yeah. So coming to the actual N230 that you're making, uh -huh. um, easy question and then a more in-depth question without wanting to stretch this out too much. Uh -huh. Why Nano TRX N320? Why all those letters and numbers together? What's the <laughs> meaning? Is there a meaning? Um, not really. Na well, Nano, I was nano. trying to think of something yeah. small. Um, and my wife really liked tiny, but I was thinking about myself and the audience of the hobby. And I think just tiny sounded too cute for me, <laughs> even though it is no, no, cute. That tech kind of feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wanted it to be a little more like, you know, you buy this thing like my age and it just doesn't feel weird. <laughs> um, so I, yeah. I skipped over tiny and then you start getting into mini desktop, whatever. And I just landed on nano tracks. Um, and then oh, tracks. Yeah. Yep. I don't know how I didn't get that. Yeah. That's you funny. might not. Yeah. If you don't, it's fine. It's so <laughs> um, obvious. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to go with that TRAX, but you know, for obvious reasons, I decided to not get too close to another. I think that's smart. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you're still kind of skating, skating on ice here with TRX, but it's I am. enough yeah. combinations of things that it's different. Yeah. Um, I'm crossing yeah. my fingers. Is it, is it all one word? Nano TRX? It's two words. Or is it two words? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, N320, is there any meaning to the particular size? No. Um, the 320, this was based off of a CAT 320, um, like the oh, actual okay. full size excavator. So, sure, sure. I, yeah, it's the same size and scale of one. And I, just, I threw an N in front of it and got the N320. I feel, I feel silly. It seems so obvious in hindsight. So, that's great. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so to move on to where your uh, machine is currently at, mm -hmm. there's still a gap in what we've talked about with getting started with um, making little parts and getting the electronics done. How did you go from there to what you're showing on screen now and what, you, what you're telling people about? Like how did I go from like these little prototypes like the hardware. to... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the actual excavator itself too, like what... Like it could even just be like a three sentence answer. Yep, beautiful. That's that's what we're here for. <laughs> How did you get to that from from all the little bits? Like, uh, is there? A, I'm just. I'd like to know. I, I'm sure other people would too. It's it's interesting, you know. <laughs> sure. Um. A lot. A lot of <laughs> parts in the trash can. I mean, really, that's it. Right. I, okay. I. I'm sure from an engineer's perspective, they could do this all in software. They could run simulations, see what's going to work, see what doesn't. Not me. Nope. I, uh, I did it probably okay. the hard way. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I stayed mostly on the resin. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed on the resin printing for as long as I could. Um, just, you know, implementing new designs and trying to figure out what would work, especially for the functional components that, I mean, it's, it's fine. You can get anything to look nice, but getting it to function, uh, that was the biggest challenge, especially the little tiny linear actuators. I mean, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're tiny. They really are small. 
Um, and so you've got to get all your fulcrums and your mount points right, and the, it's got to have enough force but and enough movement, but not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. That's uh, so. Just you're a trial and error kind of approach. Yep. Um, that's me the too. biggest. Yeah, all right. The biggest you. challenge for me was moving from resin printing or pr 3D printing in general over to mm -hmm. injection molding because right. you have to kind of think and you have to design for manufacturing and injection molding. You can't, t I couldn't take this design and just go say, hey, let's go make this on a CNC and then inject it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, you can't have any overhangs. There cannot be like a single overhang on the entire thing because you can't machine it. Um, yes. And then also you have to be thinking about part that, thickness uh the consistency of thickness because it will shrink if it's too thick in one spot and not thick in another um hmm. i mean i could i could go on for days but it, it's just i had to kind of take the whole design go back to the beginning look at every single part and say like is this manufacturable and how does it need to change so there's hmm. probably five versions of finished versions of this thing going from printing to cnc machine wow um, and I I'm threw out so a lot of mold. You've done it in <laughs> such a small, small amount of time too. It's full time. Yeah, now. You, yeah, that's 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 amazing. Well, what about the tracks then? Are they are, are they plastic? Yes. So okay, the tracks were a big sticking point, and they still are. They're they're still in. They're finished, but they're in development. Um, I mean, I say that everything will always be in development. I think it can always be better. So I'll I'll keep trying mm. to make it better. Um, hmm. the tracks are the biggest sticking point for me when selling it because they're individual pieces. Um, and they, hmm. they're snapped together joints and which is great for, you know, if it breaks, I'm going to throw in a bunch of extra little parts, but for assembly time, <laughs> especially when I was thinking about the labor it. component. Yeah. Cause yeah. your time is ultimately worth something. That's uh, yep. Especially with something heavy like this, that's arguably going to become one of the major expenses if you were to use help. And if you're doing it on your own, boy, oh boy, I mean, <laughs> success could be your own worst enemy too. <laughs> right, yes. It's a, um, the whole project management thing ahead of you here as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, that, I guess that brings me to, to asking about Kickstarter. Um, yes. Because that's how I found out about you. I just, I don't read many emails. I'm, I'm just crazy busy all the time. And I didn't even realize I still had one of my emails uh, link to it, but I just saw this little excavator. I was like, everything else just went poof out of my mind. I was like, let's have a look at that. Um, oh yeah, Sweet. and I got very excited, and I, was like, I couldn't shut up and take my money. I couldn't do it quick enough. <laughs> so you're, um, as well as learning to, how to do all this stuff, you're now learning, I guess, project management. If you haven't done anything like this before, because I've looked into this in the past, I've got a few inventions that I've, I ultimately didn't go ahead with, but I know I've looked deeply into manufacturing um, PCB. Uh, and all the all the stuff like that, and even thinking about IP and controlling for that, and and inventory, and then how am I going to balance, uh, you know, money up front as a, as a lump sum, like if it was Kickstarter and all the rest of it. Um, mm -hmm. I I was starting to get a feel for how you work, Jonathan. That you might be kind of like me, and you can picture the shape of it, but you're not actually getting exactly what it's going to look like until you get a certain way through. And then the next bit kind of reveals itself like a map revealing in a game, and then you can make good plans. I might be putting words into your mouth here, but what's what's the next six months, twelve months for you looking like with this? And like, if you're at liberty to share it, um, sure. Where are you in the project? How are you feeling about it? Um, yeah, I guess tell me about the Kickstarter side. Yeah, so I mean, it brings up kind of the business side of the whole thing, um, and learning how to do Kickstarter effectively um, was a big challenge because I, I don't really, I've never done a Kickstarter. Um, I've never really backed any Kickstarters. I, I, I just kind of stayed away from the platform. I didn't know much about it, but hmm. um, the reason I, I am doing a Kickstarter, like the product is, is developed. I would say it's 90% of the way there. Now it's just kind of tweaking on it and getting it perfect where I send out one of these things. I know somebody's going to be happy with it and they're going to play with it and it's going to work. Um, but the biggest issue coming to getting the price, cause I'm selling them for uh, like $99 for those that get it first, which is really hard to do. <laughs> um, I don't doubt it. I'm surprised at the price. Honestly, it's, it seems amazing. The only, I don't know how you yeah, do it. The only way I could do that is with bulk quantity. Um, 
and that's sure. getting the little like these tiny little motors just using like this is a very small motor but it's also very expensive for the unit um i think these are a couple mm. dollars each even in quantity mm. so mm. getting getting all of these tiny components down to a palatable price where it still makes sense to do it um that's the reason for the kickstarter so i'm hoping to build momentum um Got it. and just get it get it shooting as fast as possible um gotcha. as far as a timeline goes it, it's right now it's it was flexible it's starting to become a little more rigid but for now what i'm hoping to do um i don't know if you have done much marketing but for a kickstarter you kind of want to do a pre-launch so a pre-launch gets tons of people interested um in a short mm -hmm. amount of time mm -hmm. and that's through sure. marketing through posts youtubes um you know all, all kinds of stuff and I'm driving people to make reservations and uh, mm. just follow the page just to see what kind of customer base I have. Um, and I'll put that on screen since we're talking to nanotrxrc.com is the best yes. place. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's it. Um, so once I feel confident that we're going to achieve our goal, then it's about taking it from pre-launch where October 1st, I'm hoping to go live with the Kickstarter. Um, wow. Cool. So October 1st is go live. It's either going to be a 21 day or a 30 day campaign. Um, post that, I, we should be wrapped up with that in November. And then I'm hoping to be shipping by January to February. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's going to be a lot. It's going to be really busy the next couple of months for me. But I think I, I'm confident we can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't, I, I do not <laughs> doubt you. I wish you all the very best with it. Mm -hmm. I tend to be excitable about this kind of thing anyway, and I love making stuff. It's, it's so fun. I really admire what you're doing, Jonathan. I, I'll keep gushing <laughs> if you don't shut me up. But um, yeah, I'm excited yeah, to yeah. see how this goes for you, and uh, I'm excited to play with one of these little units and just enjoy the thing. It, I just I love what you're doing. Good job. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and I mean, if you have any questions, what I think would be awesome for, for people at some point, I want to do either a live stream or just something. Um, but even you personally, like if you have any questions about like how I got to some certain places in this whole process, even like the injection molding machine, stuff like that, that I'm using, um, feel free to ask. I mean, I, I wish I had someone to ask when I started. <laughs> it makes I, a difference, doesn't it? Right. It's yeah. such a, like a black box of just, this is a weird space to be in because there really aren't micro injection molding people like YouTube, even like there's not that much content on injection mm. molding at all. Like you search it, you well, get that, these that's, that's massive opportunity, honestly. Sorry. I keep talking. Yeah. About you, um, <laughs> yep. There's a whole opportunity there as well, um, which may not be a fit for your stage in life and whatever you're doing, but um, right. early, early first to market, as you know, is uh, that's a really powerful thing. If you've got some expertise already, and you're already clearly good at making videos, if you made that video, that one that's on your channel, just the one video, yep. gosh, I already <laughs> admire what, like, seriously, that's, you could totally own that space if you wanted to. You already have mm -hmm. what you need, even at this stage, and it, you're not right. asking me for this, but you could learn with your audience, and it would it would be a kick-ass channel, honestly, but yeah, that may not be where you're but opportunity, maybe. opportunity. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know yet. I, I'm a little too busy right now, but in the future, if I things calm down and I kind of hand off some of it, yeah, 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 absolutely. Sure, sure. If you want to find out more about this project, if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these at some point as well, look at nanotrxrc.com. I'll put it in the description. Um, I'll have a link to the Kickstarter down there as well, but it's all at this website. Jonathan, thank you so much for spending the time and talking shop with me today. It was just such a pleasure. Really good to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you, Craig, for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I guess we'll talk again, no doubt. All the best with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you're interested at all in RC construction equipment, the makerspace, or the amazing technology that we all have at our fingertips at home, you don't want to miss this one. Chris G'day, it's good to have you here. Oh, hold on, hold on. Before we begin, <laughs> my name is Jonathan. I don't know if there's some confusion. <laughs> uh, it's Jonathan. I'm so sorry, Jonathan. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I was like, well, this, this might be bad. Oh, I can be another Chris. I can be a, a Chris personality. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs>